For centuries, governments had controlled cryptology. That would change with the modern age. Soon after World War II, computers began to create codes of almost infinite complexity. There's a rule of thumb in cryptography. If you double the number of combinations that the code makes, you have to square the number of combinations that the code breaker has to try. So one guy is going from 5 to 10, but the code breaker has to go from 5 to 25. It's much easier to make the number of combinations virtually impossible to test. But this new encryption was still only accessible to the government. In 1952, President Harry Truman founded the National Security Agency, the greatest collection of computer and cryptologic talent in the world. Its charge was to intercept and decrypt intelligence from all over the globe. By the 1970s, more businesses began using computers to encrypt communications. But distributing secret keys needed to encode and decode messages remained cryptology's greatest historical problem. Businesses had to physically fly couriers to dozens of distant offices to deliver the secret keys to avoid interception and to ensure absolute security. But key distribution was not cryptology's only problem. By the 1970s, some people were concerned about the growing code-breaking power of the government because of computer technology. I think the biggest threat to privacy that we face is Moore's Law. It's the power of computing doubling every 18 months. The human population is not doubling every 18 months, but the ability for computers to keep track of us is. Surveillance technology with computers behind them to analyze the surveillance data can give rise to an omniscient government. And it's not clear that democracy can survive omniscience. By the mid-1970s, a trio of Stanford cryptographers, Whitfield Diffie, Martin Hellman, and Ralph Merkel, created a theoretical model for coded computer communications that eliminated the need for a secret distribution of keys. It also sought to offer powerful digital encryption to a perceived future of mass computer users as a counterweight to government spying. Called public key cryptography, it gave each computer user a pair of different but related keys, one public and one private. Now say Bob wants to send a secret message to Alice. Bob would use Alice's public key for encoding, but only Alice could use her private key to decode the message. No physical transportation of secret keys. And now, even Bob and Alice could theoretically have access to encrypted communications hidden from the most powerful investigative forces in government. Complete privacy. None of the other developments in cryptography that I have seen, from the beginning of codes and ciphers themselves, has had the impact or has been as original a concept in cryptography as Whitfield Diffie's invention of public key cryptography. Within a year, three MIT researchers, Ronald Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Adelman, created a series of mathematical equations using prime numbers that made Diffie's theory practical. As a side note, a group of three scientists, James Ellis, Malcolm Williamson, and Clifford Cox, working for Britain's government communications headquarters, apparently independently invented public key cryptography by the mid-1970s, just before Whitfield Diffie. Their work was classified, and it wasn't until 1997 that public acknowledgement of their feat was recognized. As for the three MIT inventors, they formed RSA Data Security in 1982, the first company to commercialize public key cryptography and launch secure e-commerce. The market we were going after in 1982 was the internet market, okay? But we were so premature because it was to be 15 years later that the World Wide Web took off. But the National Security Agency did notice and desperately tried to stop the spread of public cryptography. 
In 1986, the government stopped Lotus Development from exporting its software because it included RSA encryption. Then in 1993, the government investigated Phil Zimmerman for creating and distributing Pretty Good Privacy, a software that used RSA encryption over the Internet. PGP could be used on anybody's personal computer instead of just the giant machines used by the government and businesses. There was a time when NSA held a monopoly on this kind of technology. But over the past 20 years, that monopoly has eroded, and now academic cryptography has reached parity with the NSA. And PGP uses the best of the academic cryptographic algorithms and has made it available to the masses. The National Security Agency was terrified that criminals were now accessing the world's most powerful, unbreakable encryption.